Peeking is one of the most important skills a Valorant player can have, but unfortunately, not a lot of people know how to peek properly, and even fewer people know why they would peek in one way versus another. So what are the different ways of peeking, and how would you decide which peek to utilize? If you want to jump straight to the practical side of peeking and how to perform each peek properly, the timestamp is on screen now. But for the rest of us, let's get into some theory. There are three core principles of peeking that you need to keep in mind at all times. First, you need to make yourself as difficult to hit as possible. Second, you need to make the enemy as easy to hit as possible. And third, you need to push the outcome of the peek in your team's favor as much as possible. The first two are pretty straightforward, but for principle three, think of it this way. Whenever you're peeking an enemy, you are always giving something up. Whether it's smokes, flashes, agent abilities, time, or even your life, you are always putting something on the line when you peek. On the flip side, you always gain something from the peek too, whether it's a kill, information, or anything else. And it's your job as the peeker to make sure that these losses and gains are weighed in your team's favor as much as possible, so you lose less and gain more. We cover this concept of risk versus reward in our mid-round mindset video, so definitely check it out after this. We'll get into the practical applications of these principles in a little bit, but for now, just know that these are important things to keep in mind. Now, let's get into the actual ways of peeking. Peak 1. White swinging. White swinging, or as it's sometimes referred to white peeking, swing peeking, or swinging out, is where you pop out of cover very quickly to throw the enemy off. Here's what the enemy would see on their screen. As you can see, with white peeking, you're utilizing principle 1, making yourself as difficult to hit as possible. The enemy needs to react at lightning speed if they want to track or flick your head. On the other hand, the enemy is also more difficult for you to hit. And if there are multiple enemies around, you're exposed to more than one angle, making this peak potentially more risky. So when does it make sense to white swing? Well, you need a rough outline on the whereabouts of the enemy. White peeking blindly doesn't make much sense. To perform a white swing, stand as close to the wall as possible and pre-align your crosshair where you expect the enemy to be. Then simply run out sideways, counter strafe and get your kill. Remember to actually stop moving before you shoot, or you'll spray all over the place. The reason we need to stand very close to the wall is purely because of how perception works. If you stand far away, you'll appear to move slower on the enemy's screen. If you stand close, you'll appear to move faster on the enemy's screen. So to throw the enemy off as much as possible, stand close to the wall. Peak 2. Tight peeking. Tight peeking or slow peeking is a much slower peek, where you clear angles in a methodical way. You clear corners and common spots thoroughly and only expose yourself to one angle at a time. Unlike wide swinging, tight peeking utilizes principle 2, making the enemy as easy to hit as possible. By clearing angles slowly, you give yourself more time to react and fight. And it goes without saying, but if you're shift walking, you're also going to be silent. If you've got a lot of angles to clear though, tight peeking may not be ideal, as it'll take a long time to slowly clear everything. And unlike faster peaks, you'll be more easy to track and pre-aim. So when does it make sense to tight peek? When you've got little or no information on the enemy, and you're forced to clear angles one by one. It's not smart to sprint into an area you have no information on. To tight peek correctly, place yourself as far from the wall as possible, shift walk, and track the edge of the wall, clearing angles one by one. Key point here, stand as far back from the wall as possible. The reason for this is because of what's known as angle advantage. Here's a quick rundown on what angle advantage is. We'll be quick, I promise. First off, every player model has their vision in the middle of their heads. So if this part of their head is blocked, their vision is blocked. They can no longer see you. But your vision isn't blocked. You can still see a large chunk of Sage's body poking out. This is angle advantage, where the enemy cannot see you, but you can see them. To better understand this, let's look at the scenario from above. As we can see, in this case, Brim can see Sage, but Sage cannot see Brim. In other words, angle advantage is in Brim's favor. If Sage wants to avoid the situation, the only thing she needs to do is stand further back. Now, unlike earlier, her shoulder isn't poking out from the side, and Brim's angle advantage is nullified. In fact, if Sage stands even further back from the wall than Brim, Sage will have the angle advantage, and will now be able to see Brim slightly before he sees her. Standing far from the wall might sound contradictory to what we recommended for wide swinging, but understand that the added speed for wide swinging more than makes up for the loss of angle advantage. This might seem a little complicated at first, but all you need to remember is stand close to the wall when wide swinging, stand far from the wall when tight peeking. Peak 3. Crouch peeking. Now, crouch peeking isn't very common in lower ranks, but if you want to level up your gameplay, it's important to learn it eventually. Basically, crouch peeking is where you crouch behind cover and stand back up just before the enemy sees you. This split second change from crouching to standing throws the enemy off utilizing principle one and gives you a temporary advantage. Here's what the enemy sees during a crouch peek. Oh, the crouch. The downside here though, is that this is a little tricky to get right. So practice is key. You can also be caught off guard if you stand up at the wrong time, so crouch peeking is most useful when you're confident on the whereabouts of the enemy. 
to crouch pick properly, crouch behind the wall and swing out on the enemy. But just before you cross the point of contact with them, stand up and get your kill. Peak 4. Jump peeking. Jump peeking is a bit different from what we've already covered. Its main purpose isn't really to utilize principle 1 or 2, but rather to gain information on the enemy weighing the outcome in your team's favor. You quickly jump around a wall to see what's on the other side and get back behind cover before the enemy has time to react. You do, however, give away your position, meaning that if they're smart, they can use utility to clear you out. You'll also be out with your knife for extra speed, so if the enemy is closer than you expected, you could be caught off guard with your pants down. So when should you jump peek? Mainly when you have no information on a particular area and want to gain some intel. To do a jump peek correctly, stand a couple steps away from the wall, run forward, jump around the wall, and use your mouse and keyboard to curve your jump back to cover. This can also be applied to jiggle peeking, where you quickly move side to side to gather information. In both cases, you momentarily expose the enemy's location not just for yourself, but for the whole team to see on the minimap. If you want to take this concept to the next level, you can also try shoulder peeking. You basically perform a small jiggle peek, but instead of seeing the enemy with your own eyes, you expose your shoulder for a split second to bait the enemy to shoot you. Peek 5. Re-peeking. Lots of players make the mistake of peeking an enemy, having a brief gunfight, and re-peeking again in the exact same way. Don't do this. Not only are you ignoring principle 3, but you're disadvantaging yourself with the re-peek. Think about it. Before you re-peek, the enemy may have already moved, making them more difficult to hit. But from their perspective, you're peeking them from the exact same place as before, making their crosshair placement much easier. So, when we re-peek an enemy, we need to add some sort of variety to the peek. Whether it's flashing, smoking, double peeking with a teammate, using agent abilities, or even just using a different kind of peek, like crouch peeking. Dry peeking in the exact same way as before increases the enemy's odds of killing you and decreases yours, so you need to throw the enemy off in whatever small way you can. Peak 6. Double peeking. Double peeking is extremely underused in lower ranks, but can be deadly when done right. The idea is to peek the enemy with two people, overwhelming them with firepower and maximizing the outcome for your team. When double peeking, it's important to remember to offset your movement slightly, because peeking in the exact same time will maximize the enemy's chance of landing a collat or getting a lucky spray, and peeking too far apart will allow the enemy to essentially take on two separate engagements. So when you decide to double peek, coordinating with your teammate is crucial. Even if you're in a game with randoms, calling something like, hey, peek together with me in 3, 2, 1, can be the difference between a successful and unsuccessful double peek. 3, 2, 1, peek. In general though, double peeking is a lot more situational, and in a lot of cases, it makes more sense to hold angles than to push. We'll be covering when you should and shouldn't peek in our video on the psychology of Valorant, so stay tuned for that. Now, we weren't able to cover every single type of peek in this short video, and there are lots of other peeks to keep in mind. For instance, peeking through a smoke, peeking a spike defusal, peeking against an operator, peeking more than one person, and plenty more. If you'd like us to make a part 2 on this video going over these more situational peaks, let us know in the comments. And stay tuned for our definitive guide on holding angles. If you found this video helpful in some way, make sure to give it a like, it helps us out a ton. And be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.